Um, just a little background, my name is Justin Seibert. I'm the president of Direct Online Marketing. We do search engine marketing. That's what my company does. We're based out of Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, Google qualified. A large and growing part of our business is reputation management and dealing with companies having bad news come out and all of a sudden they have to deal with how do I respond to this. Uh, they end up losing business on branded searches. Um, therefore, it ends up being one of my favorite topics to speak about because I think it's the most interesting. But what I care about is making sure that you understand that this is your presentation today. Okay? You had four other presentations you could have chosen from. You came here. I appreciate that. Uh, so I want to make sure that um, you speak up. If you have questions, we got five people here. We're going to be fine. Go ahead. Throw up a hand. Just shout out Justin. Throw a shoe at me. Something like that. Does that all sound fair? Deal? Okay, cool. Now, another thing I didn't know. I end up usually speaking about reputation management for businesses. And even at the class that I teach at West Liberty University, I'm speaking to students, but I'm speaking about for businesses. My understanding coming here was that it might be more of a personal, and so I've put together some slides, but I'm happy with throwing all the slides away, using some of them, reasoning through them, I want to make sure that you all get out of what you want, uh, get what you want out of the sessions. So if I can just kind of hear from you, this is the way that I'm going to hold myself accountable. What would you like to learn about today? Yes? I'm an educator, so I'm looking at it from the perspective of my students. So what is it that they can do to be proactive, and if they have to be reactive? And would you, okay. There are a couple points there. Uh, this is a huge one that you just brought up, proactive versus reactive. And we will definitely go over that. Now when you're also talking about the students, are you talking about, um, it could be a lot of things. Is it getting into grad school? Is it getting a job in the real world? I'm in K-12. So oh, talking about getting into college. Well, even getting, it's just, I mean, yes, getting into college, but kind of what's going to follow them afterward. Yeah. The, the, the living record, if you will. Yeah, and what's scary, I'm curious, uh, do you see the students not generally having an understanding or caring about that? Well, in initially, no, but now I think they do. But the, they're also, um, like the GPS location thing on the cell phones, mm -hmm. like the students are unaware of them, I and mean, I've talked to my students about them. But there are lots of privacy issues that... Oh, you know, there are huge privacy issues. The only... Um, the only company that may care less about privacy than Google is Facebook. Um, I want to make sure I get this right. This is one of my favorite sites, pleaserobme.com, and it talks about exactly what you're talking about, uh, which is the GPS location. Hey, yeah, I'm out right now. There's nobody home. You know. By the way, there's a key under the mat. You might as well be saying that, right? So these are some real issues, and I'm glad you brought that up. And I, Make sure that we do touch on the geographic aspect of it as well. Okay, great. What else did everybody want to learn about? Yes? I'm interested in protecting political office holders. Oh, oh. They're big boys. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> That's the problem. We, we do a decent amount of work here, and it is. Um, it's a real issue. And what makes it difficult as well, you know, they have this past history that they're usually dealing with to some extent or another. Um, but then also they're trying to create this separate persona um, as they're running for office. And it's a very short shelf life where a lot of the things we're going to be talking about take some time to start building up. Um, and so what are the ways that you can balance that? And I'm just going to put a little note to myself right here. Um, and we're definitely going to go over it, but I'll spend some more time on it with Google Places. There's some other things you can do as well, but I'll give you a couple tips that will help speed up the process and make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, great. What else? Other things people want to go over? All right. We got ourselves a pretty good list. All right. And give me a sense. Um, just pull this back up really quickly. Give me a sense. Um, As you can see, I'm not a multitasker. I think that's a, I don't want to sound sexist, but I think women are very good at multitasking and men generally are not. At least that's what I tell myself. Um, how many people are on Facebook right now? Most people. 
how many people are doing Facebook for business or non-personal reasons? Okay. Uh, separate. Um, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Foursquare, uh, any other ones like Gowalla, anything else that's out there? Anybody using Flickr to upload uh, pictures? Um, anybody using YouTube not just to watch videos but to upload videos? Do you have a channel as well? Okay, great, excellent. All right, great, gives me a great idea. Now, just go through this. I think that everybody has a pretty good understanding um, but some of the major reasons, one of the things that I encounter all the time is why do you care about your online reputation mattering? And three years ago, this was a huge fight with companies and individuals. And it's becoming less of a fight. People are starting to understand why it's important. Again, I made this out more for students, but you know, talking about how do you land a job? How do you get into school? What people don't realize, uh, what students don't realize, and it's very unfortunate, is that the very first thing that uh, college administrators and HR people do, they Google you and they look you up on Facebook, and people don't realize that. And you still have this prevailing attitude with a lot of the parents that, oh, that's just kids being kids. I did all sorts of dumb stuff when I was a kid. Well, I did all sorts of dumb stuff when I was in high school and college. I still do it sometime. But fortunately, Facebook and those things weren't around. If they were around when I was in college, I would have uploaded to them and I would have this living record that we're talking about that I'm fighting out from under. And so I think it's impressing upon them that these are real issues. Um, not losing out on guaranteed business. One of the um, things that people don't realize, and we'll see if we can pull up a search on this real quickly. We'll spend some more time on it in a second. Have you all noticed Google giving you more and more of those maps in the upper right hand corner as you do search results. If you listen to Google talk, any of the executives, there's only five, uh, there's only two things they care about over the next five years. They care about local and they care about mobile. So these things are only going to get bigger and bigger. And as we scroll down and you start seeing some of the places results, and this is a really very new phenomenon, but what, when you look at these, um, and the local results that are embedded in here are those that have those little red pin drops. Is there anything that stands out to you there? It knew that you were in Columbus and you didn't enter that. Is that crazy, right? I mean, and, and that's a huge change. Before you had to either type in Columbus or you had to click on the maps um, or places tab that's up top to be able to find it. And now they're figuring out, you know what, if you're looking for a car dealer, you're looking for that. They still have the, uh, if we scroll back up, they still have a lot of the national results up there where you're seeing CarMax, Auto Dealer, and iCart. But, you know, they can figure out this is probably what you're looking for, and that's because they have all this data for, you know, the last 10 years that they're, they're sifting through. What else? Anything else really jump out at you there? The reviews. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's more than just that there are reviews. It's the fact that they put those big, bright gold stars next to all of the listings. And to share some anecdotal evidence, um, a friend of mine just moved to uh, Missouri. And you know, when you move to a new town, you don't necessarily know where you're going to go. You're going to listen to people. They're going to suggest a place. So he had to buy a dishwasher. So they said, OK, you want to go to Company X. And he said, OK, this is where he's going to buy. He had decided that was the place he was going to buy. Right before he walked out the door, it was kind of late in the day. All he wanted to do was verify that they were still open. So he did a quick Google search on them. And really, not to look up information other than ours, but that was easier than typing in the URL of the company. He sees a one-star rating for them. He clicks on the one-star rating. He sees three reviews just bashing that they're thieves, their stuff breaks down, you absolutely never want to uh, deal with this company. And so he walked back, um, he closed his door, he started doing research, found another place to go to. And what businesses have to realize about this is that that was money in their pocket. He had already decided he was going to buy from them. But instead, because they have uh, this bad reputation out there, that's a different story. And what makes it more difficult for companies is that, um, you know, I think all of us are more quick to say something when we have a negative story to tell than a positive story. You know, the old stats, and I think these are a little bit outdated now, but was that if you satisfy a customer, they'll tell three people. If you really make a customer ticked off, they're going to tell 11 people. And I think with all social media now, those numbers are growing even more than they are now. 
Um, but there are ways that if you uh, are aware of these things that you can incentivize customers. Um, gaining new customers as well, and whether that's on Facebook or on any of these review sites. And then uh, finally, um, for those 2 a.m. when an ex has been drinking and wants to see what you've been up to, you can make sure that you have a very nice profile that makes them jealous. All right. I just mentioned before, there are only two companies that really matter. I'm not saying that in three years it's going to be these same two companies or that it's not going to be five companies. I, the way the web moves, nobody can tell you that for sure. But right now, these are the two titans. Do I care what search results are in Bing? Absolutely. Do uh, I care if somebody's doing something idiotic on Twitter? Sure, I care about those types of things. Um, <laughs> there was the story, anybody here, Cisco Fatty? Does that name ring a bell? Um, this was a year and a half ago, and a young graduate had decided that he or she was going to, uh, had accepted a job at Cisco. And they tweeted out on the drive down to Cisco um, that day, they said, uh, you know, heading to my first day of work at um, Cisco, trying to decide uh, between a fatty paycheck and um, a long commute from the Bay plus work I hate. And so someone from Cisco immediately tweeted back out. You, you've heard the story now. Yeah, tweeted back out, hey, you know, I'm curious who your hiring manager was, and, you know, I'm sure they'll be interested to know that you're going to hate this work here. Um, and I believe that the job offer was actually rescinded. So all these things happen, but primarily, all that Twitter stuff is going to show up in Google and Facebook, where they see students that are doing things that um, you know, might not look good. The other thing that when we're talking about with the students that I, I think is tough to uh, um, get across, uh, you hear, that's my personal time, right? That shouldn't matter to my boss. Uh, and I, I you know, I feel for them because in old days you could kind of, for the most part, segregate. And nowadays it's much more difficult to do that. Google does have a new product coming out that they're very secretive about. We believe it's going to be called Google Circles where they're trying to figure out how do you do that? How do you keep your work uh, acquaintances here? How do you keep your very close friends here? How do you keep those people that you're sociable to at parties over here? And how can you manage all of that? Because I, I think that, that probably is the biggest issue uh, facing social media today for personal usage. But that's coming down the pike. It's not there yet. Uh, we'll talk more about Facebook, but one of the things that I would say as well is whatever you do as bosses or as teachers, don't send out friend requests to your students. That can put them in a really uncomfortable situation. Yes? You, I, I think you're saying all this like it's a bad thing. And I, I don't think that's the way it is at all. That employee, whether he tweeted that or not, was going to be probably not a great employee. And so, in a sense, um, if the person had it in their head and let it out even to one person, it's not a, it doesn't make it any better than if they let it out to 10 million people. Um, so I, I think we have to remember that protecting our reputation doesn't mean enclosing us into some little cocoon, because if, if I'm writing nasty things about my boss, in a personal letter to someone, I still have those are still nasty things I'm saying about a boss, and that says something about my work relationship. Um, uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And let's. So you, you brought up a couple great points in terms of positive or negative. I don't view any of this as positive or negative. Part of my job is to to shock companies into awareness that this and students that this is a real issue and they have to understand it. You know, I think social media is great. I think the search engines are great. I have to. That's how I make my living. But you know, as Spider Man would say, with great power comes great responsibility, and people have to understand these things. You know, I was reading an article today. Um, it was really interesting and they said, everybody has, my boss is an idiot moments, okay? But whereas before, you would write that in a letter or you'd go home and say that at the dinner table, now you tweet it out there. Or you could, some people do, and, and these things. And the, the problem with technology, there are a couple problems with, uh, problem isn't the right word, a couple issues that have to be addressed with technology. One is that it's so easy and quick to broadcast information. Whereas before, if you're writing that letter, you had to write the letter, 
if you typed it up, you really had to go through some effort. Then you had to get the envelope, you had to get the stamp, you had some time to sit down and say, and you, then you sat there and waited for the mailman. So you had some time to sit down and say, do I really want to do this? Well now, 140 characters, I can do that in 10 seconds and get it out there. So I think people have to, you know, it's that sit down and is this something I really want to do? You know, when I'm really upset about something at work, I'll write something out very quickly and then I will give it to my wife or another employee, um, I'll send it to her, if, you know, if that's who I want to read it. Say, okay, how is the tone on this? And then I'll still sit for a couple hours and before I would send anything. And I, I just think it makes it really easy and people have to be con uh, cognizant of that, that's all I'd say. But yeah, so I don't want to come off negative at all. I just want people to understand what the issues are with these things. But yeah, and going back to your earlier point too, that's great for the company to hear. I mean, that's, how huge is that? The, the costs of hiring someone and going through training and everything like that, and then being able to find that early on and then go back to your next candidate and hire them is wonderful. Oh, sure. We all, we all do. We all yeah. do. But the reality is that we have to be accountable for what we do. I think that's one of the things you're saying. You're asking people to start to recognize how their sphere of accountability yeah. is so expanded because of social media. Oh, that's absolutely correct. Um, you know, the other problem with, with young people is the, um, you know, it's that I'm never going to die. I'm invincible. And it's kind of the same thing where they're like, Oh, well, you know, I, I hear violent femmes. Uh, this will go down on your permanent record, you know, in the background. And they think, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Wah, 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 wah. Um, and people don't realize that this will go out there. And it's that old thing, you know, I, my dad told me, I'm sure all your parents told you, you know, never do that, never say anything or write anything that you wouldn't want to show up on the front page of the New York Times. You know, it's that type of thing. And, and But people don't realize that, I'm sorry, one more thing um, is that young people are generally better at understanding the technology. So they're better at understanding what the privacy controls are, yet they don't understand that any of their friends can pull that picture and post it anywhere else. They don't understand that you know, they can be at a party doing a keg stand or, or something stupid. Someone else can take a picture of them and post those up and tag them. They don't understand what, how permanent some of those things are. Um, really, in particular with search, but just in this general idea as well, you really have two options when we're talking about reputation management. And one is to hide, just duck your head in the sand like an ostrich, and the other is to own the results. About the only time that I think hiding makes any sense is if you're talking about personal search results and your name is John Brown. You know what? You can hide behind all the other John Browns. You're going to be okay. Although, once they start getting into specific cities and states and doing some other modifiers, that's another story. But any other time, I think you want to own the results for a couple different reasons. Um, number one, if you're invisible on the web and then some bad news comes out, that's the only record of you. There's nothing good being said. It's only negativity. Uh, another, <laughs> uh, my favorite example, um, uh, still to this day, and this is several years later. Um, does the name Lois Feldman ring a bell to anybody? This was a woman who um, was probably like June Cleaver, you know, Midwest, um, you know, 45, 50 years old, a couple young kids, nice family, happened to be, I believe, Iowa Hawkeye supporters. Um, they. <laughs> They um, went out tailgating to a game, and as many people do, uh, before the game, they started drinking. Well, she ended up getting blackout drunk. And so she ended up getting busted for having sex in the bathroom at, what's Hawkeye Stadium? Or in Big Ten country? What's, anybody know the name of the stadium? Whatever the name of the stadium is, got busted for having sex in there with someone who wasn't even her husband, someone that she had just met at the game. And then, again, her name is Lois Feldman. So this has now been um, three years, two years. So there's a whole bunch of pictures from everybody trying to find out what she looked like and pulling them down from Facebook and those things. Lois Feldman, pics, videos, links, and news. Um, update, Lois Feldman, 38. 
uh, Sports by Brooks. Lois Feldman picks surface after Metrodome sex. Uh, Lois Fel Feldman, Zimbio. Um, update, Hawk fan says bathroom sex scandal ruined my life. I'm sure it did. And then you have LoisFeldman.com. This is a totally separate person who makes her living as a speaker. This is two to three years later, whereas before, life was great. She ranked number one for Lois Feldman. She has the domain name, LoisFeldman.com. Now, when people are looking up to decide whether they want to hire this woman or not, all they're seeing is bathroom sex lady. If really you weren't working with your children. <laughs> I mean, what, how much business? I, I don't think she has any clue. I, I know she knows that it's not fun, but I don't think she probably has any clue of how much business she's lost because of this. And she just got sideswiped. Nothing that she's done at all. So again, a mistaken identity, something going on can really hurt you. And then the last thing is, is the time that it takes to correct these actions, okay? We're really, there are some quick things you can do. There's some things that'll happen sooner rather than later. But a lot of what we're talking about in terms of ranking in the search engines takes time to build. Again, there are some ways that you can uh, turn that around, but most of them take some time. So if you've started with a blank slate, then you get destroyed for one of the two above reasons, then you're just fighting an uphill battle. As opposed to, if you owned 10 search results on the first page beforehand, you had a couple videos, you had a couple pics up there, you're in pretty good shape. You can weather the storm pretty well. So you can see which I like better, and that's definitely owning the results. So maybe does that, would anybody have a different feeling about that or any questions about that? No? Okay. Um, one thing I want to make sure of uh, that everybody understands, because it's not always seen, uh, although most of you are probably used to it at this point. You see those tabs up the top? Web, images, videos, maps, news, shopping. Those are all different types of search results, all of which are eligible to show up within a regular web search. You can click on the tabs and just get images, or just get videos, or just get shopping results. But, and, and, but in the way that the web used to work, in the old days, I mean all the way back in like 2006, they just gave you the 10 web results. And then they said, you know what, we think people want a richer experience than that. We think people want to see videos and images and things along those lines. So they started including these. So you have to be aware that these are things that can potentially hurt you. But as Thomas was pointing out as well, these are potential uh, arrows in your quiver as well. These are ways that you can arm yourself by being well optimized and having uh, some rankings for all of these different things. Images are pretty straightforward. Uh, there are ways that you can optimize for those just like you can for websites. Videos, the same thing. Maps. Let's take a second and talk about this. Um, are, are there any currently current races in Ohio at this point? Political season? I'm sorry, it's an off season for a lot of the country, so I just wouldn't. Well, it's municipal races. Okay. Is there anybody, you don't have to give the person you're representing, but is there any name that you could give that we can just pull up for a second to see what the results are? This one? Yeah. And then, is this a Columbus Metro race? Yeah. Let's just do this as well. One of the things, uh, mo again, most of what we talk about with search engine optimization, and that's just the fancy term for how do you get your stuff to rank. Most of the things that we talk about <coughs> take months in most cases. But I'm going to give you a tip right now, something that you can do and actually get results within two days. And those are low, uh, if you go up to maps, those are the things that we saw before when we searched for car dealers and they started showing us all of the local results. So if a politician has a physical address, you need a physical address for these things. Most of them have at campaign headquarters. 
you know, I don't know that you necessarily want to put your home address or those things down there. Um, but if they have a campaign headquarters, even if it's temporary, can set up a Google Places page. And then you have two choices for verification, usually. Sometimes they force you into one or another, but most times you have two choices. One is they'll send a postcard to you. And Google's really good about this. They usually get that postcard out within, I think they quote three weeks. Recently, it seems like it's been five days for most of our clients. But the other way is that you can do a phone verification. They can call the headquarters and they'll give you a code. You enter the code into the screen and then within, they say 48 hours, but usually it's within 12 hours, your listing is gonna show up. And just going back to this one more time, it ends up taking up an enormous uh, amount, of, uh, it ends up drawing your eye because you're gonna get that little A next to it. So it makes the web results stand out. And again, where I'm talking months and months for most of things, I'm talking about 24 to 48 hours, you can have that result up there. So I think that's the most underutilized uh, tool by politicians at this point. Yes. Say again, how they, uh, what do you do? You so you'll go to Google Maps. Um, so you just go to the Maps tab. And it's called a Google Places page. They used to call it a Google Local Listing, but for whatever reason, they felt like they needed to uh, um, change the name on that. And uh, I take that back. The easier way is just go to google.com slash places would be the direct link. And so you can do this get started. They're going to hit you up with a couple different products that they have for politicians race. Neither of them makes sense. They're called tags and boost. I probably wouldn't recommend boost to anybody under any circumstance. Maybe later one day, but, but not where it is now. Tags can make sense for 25 bucks a month. Um, they'll make your ad stand out a little bit more. But we're talking about politicians. You're the only one that's going to show up in there. I don't know why you pay the 25 bucks for it. But if you're an auto dealer and you want to show a special, it might make sense to get that little extra um, uh, uh, button that they put on there to make your ad stand out some more. Well, you'd be able to get that tag before your competition does. You're talking about as an auto dealer or as a politician? The politician. Um, Maybe both. But. Well, it, it depends. So if you're ranking for um, Columbus, Ohio, if, you're, if your place's page listing is being triggered on uh, Columbus, Ohio mayoral candidate or whatever the race is, um, uh, mayoral race, then yes, absolutely you would want to do that. But if you're only getting it so that it's showing up for the candidate's name, you don't really need to worry that your candidate is going to be out there. Now, I, I like a lot of different things. I like running some really inexpensive uh, Google AdWords ads. Um, and running on, can on candidates' names, opponents' names, um, and some other things. There are a lot of other tricks, but, but in terms of reputation management, doing that places page, I think, is the quickest, easiest thing that you can do, and it's free. Well, especially in Columbus, because unfortunately, a lot of the candidates have the same name. I mean, we've had years where there's been six Browns running in the <laughs> You know, that's a great point, then. That's a great point. You'll excuse me, I come from a very small town. <laughs> well, Browns are. Um, so anyway, so that's that's one of the things that you can do, uh, and I said for Google Places because that's the that's the big daddy, right? But uh, Bing offers local, Yahoo has local. It's the only local thing that they still have. They f ended up farming out everything for ten years to uh, Microsoft as a part of an alliance, but for some reason kept local. Um, and then there are a bunch of review sites as well. For politicians, I don't think so. But if you're talking businesses, there's Yelp, there's Insider Pages, there's YP.com, all those other places. Um, but definitely Google. And I would do Bing and Yahoo as well, because people do search there still. Bing only does postcard verification. Yahoo does their own internal verification. So they'll just get back to you in five days. Bing's postcards, you want to do now, because Bing's postcards, we've had them triggered eight months later. They seem like they're on a good path now where they're only taking a couple weeks, but I don't know what that lag will be for you. Yeah, you're welcome. Don't want time. Okay. 
So let's speed through a few of these. Oh, um, the, the other two things that I would encourage all of you to sign up for, and these are free things, are uh, is set up a Google profile. And so if you go to google.com slash profile, you can set that up for yourself, you can set that up for a business. And sometimes they'll put that result in a blue um, thing at the bottom of the page so it makes it stand out as well. And then Google Alerts. Anybody using Google Alerts already? Yeah. I mean, they're not, they're not great. You know they miss some things. But as a free service, I think it's pretty good. And that's just google.com slash alerts. And what that does is anytime Google, supposedly, uh, it still says that it's in beta. It's been that way for five years. Um, uh, anytime that Google indexes something with a certain result coming up, it's going to send you an email. Or you can do it once a week or you know, whatever you want. Um, but you can do that for competitors, you can do that for your own name, for any search term that you want. The one tip I would give for names is put your name in quotes and do different variations with and without the middle initial, with and without the middle name. If you don't put it in results, um, like for my name, I would end up getting uh, a page that talked about Justin Smith and Sarah Sybers. But if you put in quotes, I only get Justin Seibert. So it just ends up um, uh, weeding through some of the garbage for you. Do, do Google Alerts tell you anything about how quickly things are getting indexed? We've had a lot of debate over this. Um, and my short answer is I don't believe that they do. Um, but I can't say that with certainty. Because when we were having trouble with um, uh, a certain RSS feed that we were running for a blog, and we didn't know about it. Stuff just wasn't popping up. We got the problem fixed. We started seeing the Google Alerts more quickly. So I, I'm not 100% convinced they don't, but I wouldn't rely on them for that. Um, if you go to Google Webmaster Tools, that gives you a lot better um, sense of that. And, and that's free as well. Um, Facebook, I think the uh, from a personal standpoint, I think the most important things is just not putting up there, it, putting anything up there that's going to cause you trouble at some point because people can take that down. I would start scrubbing now. If any of your students or any of your people or any of your politicians have anything that's been up there, the other thing that I would say with all of social media, including Facebook, unless you're a politician, is that I would generally try to avoid talking about politics. I, if you, if, and here's why, if you're a radio host or something where your personality or your campaign manager or you're one of those things where your job is about you having opinions and that's how you make your livelihood, talk all you want about politics. Say all the outrageous things that you want. But for the rest of us, while you could gain some business, you could also lose a lot of business. And people forget, you know, more people voted for John McCain as the losing president presidential bid then voted for um, George W. Bush in the previous election in the winning bid. We're a very 50-50 country. And so you end up by making comments, you can end up really teeing people off. And I'm not saying about this particular bill, please support this because um, you know uh, the autism bill is going to be good for this. But I'm saying when you're like, I can't believe that dirtbag did this. You're really going to turn people off. You have no idea about it. Um, and you're going to end up losing business. It's the type of thing you could get fired over as well, whether or not you think that's real. I'm sorry, I know you even want to say something. Yeah, there's two issues. One is there's been some legal issues, because I work with a lot of judicial races, about whether judges should be on Facebook at all um, and whether we can use them in campaigns. And there's been some recent court cases on them if you're with that. But, and also in politics, a lot of times you don't want people to know what your political persuasion is during a campaign either. So you may not want to be that specific about politics, even on a political campaign. Website. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, I saw this great study, uh, New York, I think the New York Times just put it out, but it talked about these people could figure out with some pretty good accuracy, even if you never talked about politics, what your political bent was. Because they could look at your, who your friends were and who your connections were. So they could generally tell what your bent was. Um, you know, for a politician, if they're, I'm still a big believer of joining the conversation and opening up and, and getting responses, even if they're nasty. But if you're really concerned, judicial is a whole different ballgame. I mean, because they're supposed to be impartial, right? That's different. But you could still do a Facebook page. And by the way, if you're doing it for business, always do a page. Never do a profile. Always do a page. 
Um, uh, but if you uh, set that up, you can control so that uh, when people come look at your wall, they're only seeing your post, they're not seeing anybody else that's posting to your wall. So there are some different ways that you can protect yourself, but, but I understand the concern with, and I, I don't know that I would put a, a, a judicial Facebook page up. Oh, they're doing it. crazily doing it. So, and that's one of the reasons I'm looking at it is because there's a, a, you know, there's a matter of whether you're giving your opinion on things that, that could come before you as a judge. Absolutely. And so, and or who your friends are as a judge, and how many people do you have to get, you know, say, I'm sorry, there's conflict, I can't hear your case, especially when most of your friends are attorneys. So, you know, one of the one of the things to keep in mind that if it's a Facebook page, and again, not a profile, but a page, um, unlike a Facebook profile where the friendship has to be mutual, with a Facebook page, they can like you, and you don't have to ever accept that. So it's a one-way type of thing. So I think you can claim as a judge, how can I control who ends up liking my page? And I don't think when this all started that, well, I know none of these judges that, I mean, this, the Supreme Court is now talking about, because two of the Supreme Court justices were, had big Supreme Court. You're talking about Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. So they put out an opinion that said, you could, but be careful. And that's probably the best anyone can tell you, right? Yeah. But It's scary. But yeah, I, I, I think there are, in, in the other thing we, we not to get into advertising because that's not this session, but I will say that Facebook advertising in a lot of cases, I'm not a fan of it. But I think for politics, it can get you a huge amount of reach for very little money because you're paying on a per click basis and there's very low click through rates. So I think Facebook ads are worth trying out for political campaigns as well. How are we doing so far? Oh, I think we've talked about two of these pretty well. Um, make sure we're talking about proactive versus reactive. Again, I, I, I was kind of talking about it takes a while to start building up search results. Let's do a branded search. Up until very recently, Google only gave you at maximum two results within their first 10 pages on, any, uh, on the first page for any particular domain. They've changed that up for better or for worse, and now you look at something like Apple, who has, I think, eight? Yep, eight of the first 10 results are apple.com or subdomains. Um, so you do have the ability to get multiple listings for your main domain, but I think one of the things you wanna uh, uh, look into is how can you get Twitter profiles? How can you get your LinkedIn profiles? How can you get all these things? Even if you don't want to use them a whole lot, can you optimize them so that you can own as many of the top 10 results as possible? Because when you start off and you have those 10 results, you have uh, two results for your, for your website. Uh, your Twitter profile's there, your Facebook profile's there, LinkedIn's there, you have a blog that shows up. Well now, bad stuff that starts coming up has to knock a lot of stuff out of the way in order to get there and stay there. Um, other thing you can do, if there are uh, two other tactics, real quickly, I'm a fan of ad using AdWords when there's been a crisis, so that an ad center for Bing and Yahoo. Um, you heard the story about this, and those are the ads that are down the right-hand side or at the top. You heard about this happening. Get the real story here. And then you can send an ad there, and you don't have to wait for Google to think that that's a relevant page. You can get that ad up in a matter of hours. Um, so I'm a big fan of using that. And I'm sorry, I had one other thing just escaped me um, for crisis response. Oh, news releases, press releases. You can optimize your press releases as well. And those can show up in the news results that a lot of times will show up in that two to three position. So you can get some pretty big exposure for it as well. Optimize just by making sure you use keywords? Yeah, I mean, that's mainly it. Um, you should always do a service that will allow you links back to your website as well. Um, which doesn't necessarily help you, that result show up in there, but it will help build links back to your website, which will help its strengths with the search engine. Um, but make sure whatever you're trying to rank for, in these cases we're talking about candidates' names or company names or things along those lines, that's how the title should start off. You should have it in the first paragraph, you should have it in other places as well. Make sure that it's in there a few times so that search engines go, yeah, this is what it's about, and shows, shows you that. 
in the search results. So it's a way to cheat and get some top rankings for a temporary basis, but very quickly. All right, we're almost out of here. The last thing I would just say for um, that I do want to touch upon, I would encourage everybody in here to have their own personal domain. And even if that's WordPress.com and you pay the 12 bucks a year to have your own name as a domain name, I would set up a blog. You don't need any special computer language, computer programming. Use WordPress. It's great, isn't it? I mean, the, the free version, not the, the uninstalled, isn't as flexible as everything else, but it's free. Um, and I would always encourage all of you to have some kind of analytics on there as well so that you can see where is the traffic coming from to your site. Google Analytics is a great free tool. There are a lot more robust analytics packages out there, but um, for being free, it's pretty darn good. Okay. Um, and again, those were the things I wanted to get to, but we only have a few minutes left, and I want to make sure that if you had additional questions that we could go through those as well. Anything we didn't cover that we can pull up on the internet or anything else that people would like to see? Good. All right. If you have any questions, uh, do that. And if any of you are on Twitter and want to talk about how great or how terrible this presentation was, go ahead and tweet something out and use that. Are we using the uh, uh, DM? DMSWOSU. Okay, I was doing without the OSU. Okay, great. You can use that hashtag as well. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate all the questions and everybody's attention. Thank you.